I used to teach an online graduate level class uh, called Artists and Images of War. We started with ancient Egypt. Well, we looked at the impact of photography, how, how, how the idea of, of war has changed and how society has viewed war through images. Uh, we're talking basically before pre-television um, and how society got images of, of wars from prints, drawings, illustrated newspapers, photographs, um, murals, panoramas. You know, so we basically, it was a chronological study. But I guess most of it was sort of the uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th century. You know, people's ideas of war have changed, attitudes have changed. You know, a lot of the early stuff was very heroic, you know, uh, glorified war. Yeah. You know, a lot of the Napoleonic art, and art that Napoleon commissioned glorified war and made it heroic. With the impact of the camera, uh, I don't know whether you've ever seen any of the Civil War photographs of the, you know, the dead bodies lying around. Uh, and the Crimean War, you know, people started to, so, you know, war is not as, as exciting and as glorious and as heroic as it's been depicted. And then World War One comes along and that, I mean, that changes everybody's perception. Just, just the violence, the sheer violence, the, the sheer numbers of kill, people killed. You know, war was no longer anything to be sought, you know. To, to, in colonial, a lot of colonial, you know, uh, wars were, was sort of, there's a lot of propaganda. I mean, a lot of this, a lot of this war out was propaganda. You know, in order to, um, in order to have a successful war, you need to have this, the society behind you. I mean, look at Vietnam. Uh, you know, for the first few years, it was fine with them when, when people started to see the body bags coming home and the film of, of these, these soldiers really suffering. You know, they started to ask questions. In the pre-television era, you know, if you, you need to get society behind you. So you, you put posters up showing the enemy as, as uh, inferior objects. Uh, you fill the newspapers with images of you know, soldiers smiling. I mean, I, I, I use the example, I'm from England, and I use the example of the Battle of the Somme, 1916. Uh, on the first day, which was the 1st of July, the British lost 30,000 men killed and 20,000 men wounded on one day. In World War oh, in the early 20, in the 20th century, the press was very much controlled. But now it's, 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 it's free, even, even though the US Constitution talks about the freedom of the press, it was controlled. I mean, we've got, we've got photographs and we've got artwork from World War II, and on the back it's a stamp, you know, it's passed by the censor. There's a lot of censorship. It, it's very difficult today, you know, because with social media and uh, embedded, news, embedded journalists, embedded photographers, you can't get away with you can't get away with covering up. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of um, you know we're, we're only told so much, we're only shown so much. But nonetheless, the fact that soldiers in the field have, have cell phones, uh, you know, they can they can take pictures. So the the amount of images that are available today is just endless, and uh, you know, soldiers are really showing. You know, this is not very pleasant. You know, I remember there's a storm in 1990, 1992, and you would watch the news at night and you'd see a, 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 an Iraqi bunker blown up. So you'd see an aerial view, and all of a sudden, it was just like a video game. Um, and it was sort of clean and, and sanitized, you know, you saw a building blow up, you didn't realize that inside that building were humans who were incinerated in a, in a moment. But you know, it was just like a video game, just like the, my son used to play, you know, um, press a button and, and, and destroy a, an object, an alien or something. And that's how it became. And, and um, the whole idea of drone technology, uh, I was just watching a, a series on television, and um, you know, these drone pilots in Nebraska or, or, or Montana, you know, they go to work and they sit at, with joysticks and they have cameras and so on, and uh, they, they, they monitor traffic going in and out of a compound in Iraq or Afghanistan and, and uh, you know they're getting commands saying you know just watch this and if you see this you know and then they press a button and the, the compound is blown up and um, and then they go home and you know say hi to the wife and kids and have dinner and uh, and a lot of those drone pilots I mean they're called pilots but they're, they're sitting there have a lot of uh, psychological issues because uh, I mean, it's one thing to see your enemy and kill your enemy and fight your enemy. But it's another thing to sort of know you've just, you know, press the button 
I mean, war is good for business. A lot of people, a lot of organizations, companies profit from wars. Um, and, the, and the military, uh, um, you know, in the whole military infrastructure. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the billions that the US budget spends on, um, I think it's getting probably close to a trillion now, that spends on, on defense, on, on submarines and aircraft carriers and, and planes and so on. I mean, it, it is a military industrial society. Uh, that's why recently, you know, uh, Trump was reluctant to criticize the Saudi Arabians for that, you know, that killing of that guy because, you know, we, we've got billions of, of contracts, billions of dollars of contracts for the Saudis, you know, providing aircraft and bombers and stuff so they can, so they can bomb Yemen. The future of war is, war's not going to go away.